Hello, my name's John Robson, the EPM Evangelist, and I'm going to be talking to you about what's new in Infor EPM. EPM is software designed to measure, plan, report, and optimize business performance. The Infor EPM suite comprises both the technical platform and also applications built using the platform for budgeting, planning, forecasting, and financial consolidation. The applications are extensible by design, as not all use cases can be covered as standard by out-of-the-box application. I'm going to be talking to you today about improvements in three areas. The first topic is the improvements to ad hoc reporting. As the name implies, ad hoc is an end-user focused application for interactive ad hoc analysis and query, for example, analyzing sales data. It's available to authorized users in any custom EPM application. Previously, it was missing some function existing in the legacy apps it's replacing, and also it wasn't well suited to the sort of structured views that finance users expect. To remedy this, we've made several UX and functional improvements and added formatting options for finance users. The main benefit is that those finance users will be capable of authoring more of their own content and less dependence on report writing expert. I'll demonstrate that shortly. The second topic today is improvements to our Excel integration. Excel integration is a plugin to Excel to allow power users, for example, finance users and the analyst community, to analyze and report their data in a familiar spreadsheet environment. The old UI fell a little bit short of some users' expectations, but it didn't offer ribbons, considered by many as key to the Excel user experience. We also had the same issue as an ad hoc, that the out-of-the-box formatting didn't always satisfy finance users. We've remedied both issues in the April release, so customers will be able to navigate more quickly through the application and reduce the effort required to produce formatted reports. Our final topic today is what's new in OLAB modeling. It's an application component that enables business modeling users to create and maintain portable business models. That's to say the definitions of an in-memory or OLAB database to fit end-user requirements. Previously, we were missing some advanced functions in the application UI. There was typically the ability to create new dimensions and cubes. Instead, users had to understand the app schema and edit tables. These creation options and associated maintenance capabilities are now being added to the app UI, reducing the time and effort required to create new business objects. Let's look at these new features in the software. Our first demo topic today is what's new in ad hoc reporting. Ad hoc isn't new, but not everyone's using it yet. To reiterate, it enables business users to perform their own sophisticated analysis of multidimensional data and gain insight into that data. Typical use cases are sales analysis, inventory analysis, or overhead analysis. If you're an authorized user, you will find ad hoc reporting under your toolbox icon. So here's ad hoc reporting. I'm prompted to make some selections. So I'm going to choose best practices OLAP as my database and the sales analysis cube uh, to analyze. With the help of a wizard, I'm going to put measures down my page and I'm going to put products across the page. And I'm going to add that report to my desktop. You'll immediately see that I get some nicely formatted numbers. So where something should be shown as a percent, it is uh, where we've chosen to display numbers as uh, financial numbers with a currency sign are appropriately formatted. What is new, uh, the first thing that's new anyway, is the ability to transpose columns and rows. At the moment, we have product across the page. If we transpose the rows, we now have them uh, down the page. And by clicking the plus sign, I have the ability to see more detail. I can drill down to see what makes up each of the categories, subcategories, etc., till I get down to the individual products. What is new is the ability to select a total like all tires and get a context sensitive toolbar. So I just um, zoomed in. I'm now going to collapse that selection by hitting collapse on the toolbar and it reverts me to where I was. And I could also expand that. I have other options like zoom in also available to me. So the context toolbar is new. I'm going to show you another application of the context toolbar. I'm going to select revenue here and I have the ability to keep the selection. So I'm now just showing revenue broken down uh, by my product types. I'm going to just reorder this report a little bit. So I'm going to hit the uh, data icon here and I'm going to add value type to my columns just by dragging it down here. 
I'm going to make some explicit selection of actual budget and variance so that we can do some variance analysis. To ensure that the items are shown in my selection order, I'm going to click here and tell the system to break the hierarchy. And then when I update the report, you'll see actual budget and variance across the page. If I expand again, you'll notice that there are a number of significant variances, but they don't shout at you. Perhaps I want to emphasize them. And one of the new things I have the ability to do is to select a column and create a new style to format that column. I'm just going to call that style uh, neg red and I'm going to say that I want negative numbers displayed with brackets and in red but I also want my text style to be bold and italic. If I save that selection it'll automatically be applied to those columns and if I just move up to that column and if I move away from the column you'll see that everything is now nicely formatted. So that is new. Let's take a deeper dive into formats and also look at the new financial mode. One of the existing capabilities of Ad Hoc is the ability to save reports uh, in dashboard, dashboard folders uh, and I can open up a report by clicking on its name and you'll see here that this report is quite heavily styled. You'll see that the totals are underlined and two columns have blue formatting. Uh, the data is consolidation data and the blue indicates the data flowed through from the subgroup. What is, however, in Congress to finance users, and I confess to being a finance user, is that the report totals are shown at the top of the report, not at the bottom. Um, that's the BI paradigm, but it's not what every user expects. We have, however, the ability to change this. I click on the uh, data icon again, and I select my group accounts down here. I have the ability to switch into financial mode. And when I do that, what you'll see is that the totals, total assets, total liabilities and equity now appear at the bottom of the report. And the labels which previously displayed the totals have been repurposed as column headers. So it's much, much closer, uh, it not being uh, exactly what a finance user would expect. Our second topic today is what's new in Excel integration. When you open Excel, you will see that we now have a new dedicated Info EPM toolbar, which I'm now showing. I can use it to show or hide the EPM task pane, which now appears on the right, also to perform many of the functions that I would have previously required the task pane for. Let's create a new ad hoc view or slice in Excel. I will select the best practices OLAP database and the sales analysis cube and use a wizard to put my measures on rows and my products on columns and add that report to my spreadsheet. The wizard seems familiar by the way, it's because we've tried to standardize the user experience across products. So you saw similar behavior in ad hoc a couple of minutes ago. You'll notice that when I open up a, an ad hoc view or slice, I get a second Excel ribbon manage report. And I can use that to perform various functions working on the slice that I'm displaying at the moment. So for instance, I can transpose my columns and rows. At the moment I have got my products across the page. I hit transpose, my products now go down the page. Existing function um, in Excel is that I can click the plus sign to show or expand more detail. But I have a new way of performing the same function uh, from the Manage Report tab here. So I can collapse that selection, or I can expand that selection again. Another new option is the ability to convert the slice to a linked spreadsheet so that you can perform subsequent calculations on your data. Currently, we're using Excel effectively as a browser. We make a tweak of our slice by editing the Excel formula driving it which is in cell B7. I am just going to type at the end of that formula, the string Excel set, which is a name range that I created in the spreadsheet earlier, which is uh, shown in blue here. And you'll see that I have various labels and we're going to use these labels to drive the settings of the report. So let's see how we can use those settings. At the moment, you'll see that my filters appear across the page. If I change the slices horizontally 
to false, you'll see that my filters now appear down the page. It's purely a matter of personal preference. Let's now explore the ability to apply Excel styles. This is enabled by changing the value of the Excel style setting to true. Immediately you see that the columns and rows are styled. And when we expand uh, one of our selections, as we drill down, you'll see that the colors get lighter. So there was a color gradation with the least important numbers shown in the lightest color. Of course, many organizations have defined color palettes. Let me show you another spreadsheet. And this spreadsheet uses a uh, color scheme where the colors actually get darker as you drill down in, into the detail and purple is used to define the headings. And these can be set uh, by a power user or they can be set as a corporate standard. Finally today, I'm going to show you the ability to apply an Excel style formatting to all the cells in a spreadsheet. There is a selection up here called number format. And I'm simply going to copy an Excel style formula into that cell. And what you immediately see is the spreadsheet redraws itself. And because the uh, the Excel format says to put uh, negative numbers in red uh, with a leading minus sign. All the variances here are now displayed in red. It's You could do the same thing by just by clicking and going format cell, but this is just a shortcut and an easy way of doing it. Uh, that's everything in Excel integration today. Our third and final topic today is what's new in OLAP modeling, which will be of particular interest to Pi users. OLAP modeling is a component of the EPM administration application that enables business modeling users to create and maintain portable business models. I've logged in and selected Demo BA as my working model. Prior to this release, you could not create new dimensions and cubes in the module UI. I click to the left here, you can see the existing dimensions and cubes. What is new in this release is the ability to create a new dimension or cube. So to create a new dimension, I can click add up here. I can give my new dimension a name like division and it will assign sensible defaults for me. And I even have the ability to create a table in which to store at the elements for the dimension. And it gives me the ability to set security settings if applicable. When I click finish, that new dimension exists. The second new feature is the ability to create a new cube. So again, by hitting the plus sign, I'm prompted for the name of the cube. So let's call this sales two because there's an existing cube called sales. Click next. And I can say that I want my product as a dimension. I want my period as a dimension. And I want my region as a dimension. Click next. Again, I'm prompted for some additional settings, which I can come back to later. But basically my sales two cube now exists. And then the last thing you would do in OLAP modeling when you've finished is to publish your model to physically create the database. Uh, that's what's new in OLAP modeling and thank you for your attention today.